I'm Spex, and I haven't uploaded in a while, like, uh, at least five months. I should, uh, <clears throat> fix that. So, I have auditory processing issues. If you don't know what that is, and to keep it in very simple terms, your brain and your ears do not coordinate as well with each other as the rest of your body does. So your brain takes more time to understand or will flat out need to have things repeated multiple times in a normal conversation. It's not a disability per se despite its technical umbrella term having disorder in the name. But it relates more to the widely accepted idea that your brain and my brain do not see the same shade of blue when presented with it, just with hearing. The rates for this diagnosis are very interesting, as there's a recorded 2% to 5% of children who are diagnosed with APD, auditory processing disorder, and that number grows dramatically when testing adults, with a staggering range of 23 to 73%. I just happened to get the luck of the draw and gain this thing around childhood. Ahaha! I was doomed from the start! I've always imagined it as a television you have that's always had bad reception from time to time. Your eardrums are the receiver, and your brain, or the part that controls the language and speech, is the television. It's just because the central nervous system is having some problems consistently giving you a clear image. Much like cable does, outside conditions, such as weather, can also affect what you hear and what you understand. Our outside conditions just happen to be noise and, in my added case, heavy accents. I started to understand this very, very clearly when I had an outing with someone a couple of years ago. Until it was bluntly pointed out to me, I hadn't thought about how much I accommodate to this development. To give you a brief, the common things they look for when testing this kind of stuff are difficulty hearing and noise, auditory attention problems, better understanding in one-on-one -on -one situations, difficulties in noise localization, or where a noise came from, and difficulties in remembering oral information, of which I basically checked off all of them. There's more symptoms for those that have it in adulthood that I check off pretty well too, it seems. During this outing, I had slowly realized that while this person was practically yelling in my general direction, I was not understanding, let alone retaining anything they were telling me about. And then it clicked, because the two brain cells in my head finally put it all together. Dude, oh my god, do your ears not work? Call 911, this man in front of us literally just got shot! Bro, I think I have auditory issues. My therapist at the time explained to me that these issues can commonly be overlapped with symptoms of ADHD and dyslexia and that often it seems those misdiagnosed with ADHD as children will turn out to have auditory processing issues instead. If you, um, were gonna guess that's kind of exactly, uh, what happened to me and all that, so like, yeah. So that's how I started to become more aware of my underlying condition. Oh yeah, that's still there, huh? Earlier I said that a peculiar thing with how my brain handles this stuff is that heavier accents trigger this more often, especially for me. I visited my friends recently in the UK again, and the one I was staying with went with me to a busy little cafe in Colwyn Bay. He had already ordered and reassured me he would find a table for us while I paid for my food. I went up to the man in front to be greeted with a jumbled mess of an English accent. I tried to understand anything I could gather, and my anxiety ended up just accepting what I could get out of that transaction, which was pretty accurate anyway, so good for me. I realized this more and more during my trip. Cashiers, train announcers, some of my friends themselves even had sentences that I would have to ask to repeat more often because the inflection of the words they were trying to say would not transfer into my small, not worky rabbit brain. Imagine listening to an Animal Crossing villager and hearing the general noises they should make during speech, but the word bubble wouldn't always pop up for you in the game. That's kind of what everything was like from time to time. I hated to admit I'd look to my friend for guidance way more than I wanted to. The noise aspect also comes into play a lot, which is why, even way back when I was in school, I started to find myself desiring quieter environments, ones less attractive to crowds. That honestly could also be my anxiety at work too now that I think about that. Aw, look at them. They're holding hands. Stuff like this embarrasses me sometimes, especially since it can also affect speech too, which has forever been a problem in my life. I'll often ask others I'm close to for help or avoid the situation as much as I possibly can. I've had a few bad experiences with this kind of thing i.e. people I was close to quite literally yelling me to get over it, which may have ended up being in my favor? Well, in the aspect when you need to get something done enough, you suck it up and do it despite the difficulty. Such a sad way to deal with things like this, though. I will have to say, while I'm more aware of things like this affecting my life, it's nicer to have a label for it and know that it's not some super version of a different diagnosis. Stuff like this is small, but it's an obstacle sometimes. Not to say that I have the worst of it, I think I have a more functional version of it, actually, as the other things I was diagnosed with also fall under that category, and I can operate fine under normal conditions, via experience or how my fight or flight reacts under pressure. In 
the end, stuff like this makes you end up taking a liking to the more sedentary parts of your life. You sort of learn to work with it. 